is grade 11, it's finally your time, and I'm excited because, yes, how are you, Lou? Right in yourself, lady. You keep it well, girl. Oh, good. Yo, that was loud. Oh, I love it when I come into this. Oh, it's so <laughs> nice to be greeted like that. And I that. do a little dance with Lou. Guys, ah, man, you know, it's always good what? times. I am Looney, just by the way. What are we doing for the grade 11s? Microbiology. Okay. Right? So it's quite nice. Okay, diversity and classification of microorganisms. It's, it's quite a nice section, hey? What do you think? Cool stuff. I'm going to learn. And you, I know you're going to be asking me questions. So yeah, uh, we are ready girl. for you. We <laughs> are ready for you. Mindsetters, I hope you guys are ready for an exciting show. Remember to hit us up on Twitter and Facebook at Learn Extra. And then you can visit our website for all the videos, the show notes, and the schedules on learn.mindset.co.za. Lou? Yes. Here we go. Yes. Cap. So what are we going to learn today? Ooh. I've just done a whole turn. Did you see that? That was very <laughs> confusing. Well, <coughs> we're going to have a look at the basic structure. So, check. I haven't even forgotten. I know that I have to do pain. Eh? We're going to have a look at the basic structure, right? And the general characteristics of microorganisms, right? So, that's quickly. We're going to try and run over that because you've seen, seen this all before. Then, we're going to discuss the role of microorganisms and the maintenance of a balance in the environment. Because remember, that's what we need. That's what everything wants to be, a balance. Am I right, Lenny? Yes, you are a right. A beautiful balance. That's what the point of it is. Right, so, <coughs> let's get right into it. Now, I've put a question, huh? right? Look at that. Challenge question. Right? It's quite nice. It's very simple. Describe, describe, right, the process of binary fission, right, there it is, in amoebas. Right? It's, it's quite easy. It's quite nice. It's simple. You need to put your brains to it and let's see if you can come up with the answer. Keep your eyes glued because somewhere in there we're going to speak about it. Okay, so <coughs> here we go. Let's get off to the crux of the matter. Remember when, when we do this, we always start with the least complex and we make it more and more difficult because uh, it's like starting in grade one and ending in grade 12. We make things more and more difficult. Am I right, Lee? Yes, you're all right. Good girl. <laughs> right, so <coughs> we're going to start off with a nice one. It's called a virus, okay? They're quite cool. Though. But you must always remember, if I, if I have a, a general look at them, right, they are parasitic, okay, which means they suck everything dry, they kill things, right? So they, the unicellular, first of all, okay, don't forget unicellular, there's only one of them, okay? The unicellular, they're parasitic, they're extremely, extremely small because they gotta be inside us, like very small, okay? So like tiny. I don't know how else to make it smaller, huh? Tiny, tiny right? Tiny. They're very small and they have many different shapes, okay? Many different shapes. Now I've got a photo of the one they're going to make you draw most probably, okay? It's the common, common virus, okay? <coughs> it uses the host to replicate. In other words, it uses, it uses the host to actually make new cells. That's how it becomes more and more and more, okay? And in that, if you, can't, if you can remember, right, what do they do to do this, okay? They actually take our DNA and they make new ones. Right, so that's cool, right? Multiplies inside the host cell. Okay, so it multiplies inside a host cell and they burst, they kill the cell, they actually burst it open, which is not lacquer. Right, <coughs> have a look at that picture. Hey, Looney, can you remember I always look at nice pictures, eh? That is a virus, right? And the next one, if you have a look at this, there's the other one. Now, this one, hey, what do you think, Looney? Hey, what do you think? What is that? It's a virus. Now, oh. if it is, yeah, it's very simple. This is a type of virus that they're actually going to most probably make you draw in the test. So make sure you go through it. It's very simple. Okay, that is <coughs> viruses in a nutshell, nice and easy. Right, we're going to have a look at the next, next one. Right, this is bacteria. Okay, so we started with a virus, which was very small. Right, now, or should I say very simple? Please don't forget they could be living or non-living. You need to find out why they say that. Don't forget. They're always, according to me, they're non-living, non but some people say they're living. Look at what makes a creature living or not non-living. By yourself, go have a look. It's very cool. Right. <coughs> bacteria is the next one. Okay. When it comes to bacteria, there it is. They have, they also, they, they have a cell structure, same as normal, right? They've got a, cell, a, a cellular structure of prokaryotic. Now, <coughs> that big word, prokaryotic. Do you have a clue what that means? 
Okay, you're going to get two types. You're going to get eukaryotic and you're going to get prokaryotic. Well, it's, not, it's not that difficult. Now, one means, if I put it out there, one means it's got a true nucleus. It means that it's got a nuclear membrane around the chromatin network. Okay? It's got a nucleus around a complete thing. When it comes to the one, it's got a nucleus and one doesn't. Sorry, I'm trying to remember how I'm doing this. Right? One has got a nu nuclear membrane, one doesn't. Now, <coughs> bacteria is prokaryotic. So you get prokaryotic and you get eukaryotic. And the way I remember it is if you look at your cells, right, your cells have a nucleus around it. You. So eukaryotic. You get where I'm coming from. You have a nucleus, a complete nucleus with a nu nuclear membrane. Prokaryotic doesn't. So if you have a look at it, bacteria do not have a, nuclear, a, 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 a nu nucleus membrane around anything, around the nucleus. Okay? And it is unicellular once again, okay, with three distinctive shapes. <coughs> They're going to ask you this, three distinctive shapes, okay? There is coccus, I'm sure that's the first one, yes, coccus, and then they got bacillus. Now, coccus, for the example, is sphere-like shape, like a toilet roll, hey? Sphere is a toilet roll, mm -hmm. okay? Like a toilet roll, a sphere, and then you get bacillus, which is rod shape, rod is nice and easy, and the last one is spiralis which means it's a twist, right? It looks like, like a spring, huh? That's cool, like a spring. That's the one we're looking at. But that is just the basic or the three main structures. So if you have a look at it, I'm trying to think of a virus, um, or I mean a back bacteria. It is a um, streptococcus, hey? Can you remember that? Streptococcus. That is something that, that we get, and streptococcus means that this thing or the bacteria is a cylindrical shape. That's cool. <coughs> Next one. I'm trying to <coughs> make sure that you get all this information because today I'm going to questions for Africa and I'm going to show you how to answer that. But so let's go through this. Bacteria have three ways of obtaining nutrition. Okay? So three ways of obtaining energy, which is nu nutrition. You've got to get energy somehow. Okay? The first one is what you do when you're an autotroph, right? It is, make, it goes through photosynthesis. In other words, they make their energy using light. That's simple. The next one is chemosynthesis. It means that it's got the chemicals inside it to make energy. Okay. For example, if I can just put it to you, I would have said chemosynthesis and photosynthesis are almost exactly the same thing, except... Photosynthesis uses light to do it. Cool. I think that's awesome. Next one, they're also heterotrophs. Now, please remember that you are a heterotroph. I'm a heterotroph. And this bacteria is a heterotroph as well. It gets its nutrition from something else. It eats something else. Hey, what do you think, Looney? Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to keep entertaining you. <laughs> I mean, my word. Come on, Looney. Okay. Bacteria reproduce through binary fission, right? They work through binary fission, which is important because you've got to make new cells. It's very simple. You've got to make new cells. And if I have a look at it, bring it down, there's bacteria, okay? Now, if you have a look at it, they have a look, what is it? Coccus, I would say it's coccus, right? It's cylindrical, okay? Next thing, if you have a look at this, They've got little cilia coming out. Can you see it? They've got little cilia. They've also got, they can have um, flagella, right? Can you see the little tails? And those things are very important for movement. Please don't forget that for movement. They have that for a specific, specific reason. Okay, I will get to exactly how they will ask you about that stuff in a few minutes. So <coughs> don't stress too much. As long as you remember that they can move through three ways. Pseudopodia, right? They've got your cilia and they've got flag flagella. Those are the three ways or the three things it uses to move. Okay, three things they use to move. And then, of course, I love pictures. Look how nice it looks. What do you think? <coughs> you can't tell me looks that doesn't look nice. No, it eh? looks very nice. That looks nice. Very, very These nice. ones on the top here are a little bit vicious, I reckon. Oh, yeah, no. But this one down here is nice. Nice. Huh? Yes. Now, Next one we have, which is a little bit more, more complex, right, is your protista. There it is. 
Yeah, turn it around. Protista. Okay? It is a kingdom with three main groups. Okay? It's a kingdom with three main groups. Very, very easy, quite nice. Okay? They classified according, so that's the main thing, they classified according to how they obtain their energy. Okay? Obtain their nutrition, their energy. Plain and simple. So if they, uh, it's how they obtain their nutrition and how they move. There's another one, okay? How they move. So the way they move puts them in a specific group. Okay, so <coughs> let's have a look at how these go. Protozoa are animal-like. Okay, they're animal-like. So we know that the animal, you get the animals. Most ones you get the amoeba. Think about that carefully. The amoeba, we spoke about it. Okay, so you get the, the amoeba-like protists. They are heterotrophic, right? They eat other things, like an animal. Like, plain and simple, animal eats things. It doesn't make its own food. Okay, so they're heterotrophic or parasite. What is a parasite? Come, Looney, what's a parasite, my girl? A parasite. Yeah. Ugh, I know what a parasite is, man. A parasite, like, you see to us. No. Is I it, can love you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Can you say a flea is a parasite? Yes, it's exactly. There there. Perfect. Why? Because it's thingies on the host. She's got the best way. <laughs> yes. It feeds off the host. There you go. Right. That it word. feeds <laughs> off the host and the host gets harmed yes. while it gains. Okay. Yes. Don't forget that host um, doesn't get anything. Okay, uh. so now I've mentioned the movements. Can you remember the movements that I was telling you about? Here's the first one. Pseudopodia, right? They use cilia and they use flag flagella. Now, that is the main part. That's how they move, and it's very important to know how they move. Okay, here we go. <coughs> the plant-like ones, so we've spoken about the animal, the, the animal ones. The plant-like ones are, if you have a good look at it, they have to be a plant, which means they photosynthesize, right? So they... Make sure they get their stuff through photosynthesis, which means they are autotrophic, right? Nice and easy. So you've got autotrophic and you get hetero, and you means they are parasites as well. Okay, so there's the three. They can be unicellular, in other words, one cell, or, which is quite cool, they can be multicellular. Okay, so you get things like the fungus, right? The fungus-like protista, and the hetero, uh, which, the, the protista, which are, Heterotrophic, okay, can you think about any? Just a normal fungi, think about those carefully. And then you get the decomposers, okay? So they decompose and they also eat from other people, or from other things, okay? Very, very easy. Now what I've got <coughs> is I've got, I'm sure, do I have a picture? I don't remember, yes, there it is. See, I almost missed it. This here is an amoeba. It's a single-celled organism, right? And it goes through binary fission, <laughs> binary fission to actually do a specific thing, okay? Or should I say, no, I don't want to give that away. So I'm going to leave it there. It goes through specific processes, which I've asked. So make sure you remember, okay? And if you have a look here, there, pseudopodia. It moves through pseudopodia. Right, now, the next one that I've got for you. Classifying microorganisms, plain and simple. Now we've got... Fungi, right? Your fungi's there. It can, put it this way, it can be unicellular or multicellular, and they are eukaryotic. So what have they become? More complex. If they've become more complex, it means their nucleus is not getting, getting a, a, a membrane around it. Okay, so they're euk eukaryotic, and they have cell walls made of chitin. There it is. You know, like all the animal, uh, the, the plant cells, they've got chitin, that hard wall around it. Okay, then... <coughs> Multicellular, okay, watch this, multicellular fungi are intertwined together by threads called hyphae. Now, guys, hyphae is quite cool, right? Hyphae is long threads, they're different cells together, they're multicellular, okay? Long hyphae. Now, you will see it later, which one's which. Okay, so fungi are heterotrophic or saprophytic. What is saprophytic? Okay, saprophytic is they help with decomposition. Okay, then they get their food from whatever subst substrate they grow on. 
Okay, whatever sub substrate they grow on. In other words, <coughs> bread. Okay? They grow on bread, they get all their stuff from bread. And then they are both, they, they go through both sexual and asexual re reproduction. Sexual and asexual reproduction. And if we have a look, how cool is that? Okay, what is that? Can you tell me what that is? A mushroom. It's a mushroom. <laughs> Things you shouldn't eat. Well, the ones from, from the, 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 the place. The weird eat. looking ones. We can eat the normal ones. Uh, I, I only eat the ones that come from Big yes, and, and, and things like shops, that. You yes. know, the shops. Not This one now uh, looks dodgy. No, I wouldn't. Never. Right. So now that I've crammed you <coughs> with all that information, right, I think you need to go for a quick break, right? And in that break, I want you to think because when I come back, I'm bringing back the power of questions. Yes. Okay, what do you think? Yes. Mindset has the power. Of questions. <laughs> <laughs> Just a quick shout out to Mosho Piadi. A P W M A T I M U T E M B U N G O S I P E N I M K O V E G I F T. And yes, those are my great elevens. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. We will see you straight after this break. Welcome back, mindset is from that break. Power question time from Lou. So we're going to get straight into it. <laughs> she has lost it. It's you. I love it. It's right. you. <laughs> so what I've done is I've got this nice picture. Look at that. Right? I have two bugs. Right? One hiding behind the corner and another one comes walking across. And as he comes across, he rips out this thing and he goes, psst. Hey? Do you want to be a super bug? Right? Simple. This is what I'll give you. Do you want to be a super bug? Stick this into your genome, okay? Stick this into your genome, and even penicillin won't be able to harm you. That's all it is. That's quite cool, right? He's not trying to shoot him, <laughs> right? There's specific things there. You need to look at this picture very carefully. Okay, now, this is actually, I'm going to give it to you now already. This is actually happening in a hospital, which is quite strange, but it's happening in a hospital. Okay, so... Let's have a look at the first question. What does the term, here we go, what does the term superbug mean? Okay, why would they use superbug? The reason why they've put this in there, they're trying to make you think, they don't want to give the answer away. So what they've done is they've said, <coughs> this bug must be able to become like Superman. And what is Superman, for example? Can you do anything? What, what is so special about Superman? Has superpowers. Superpowers. And no matter how much you hit him with an aeroplane. No. Or with a brick wall. Or Superman carries an aeroplane. Exactly. <laughs> Except for me, of course, right? This is... Yeah, yeah. no, you... The, me, I take no. Superman out. But <laughs> Superman cannot be killed. Okay? So what does a superbug mean? It means he is resistant... Resistant to antibiotics, right? If you have a look at it, resistant to penicillin. Okay, even penicillin can't harm him because what kills bacteria? Our penicillin and our what are those things called? They antibiotic. That's why we're given it. So, is this a virus or a bacteria? By the way, okay, it is a bacteria, not a virus. Next one. What does the term? antibiotic resistance mean. So they've even given you, right, they've even given you this whole thing. They've told you what it is. And I've explained it. So what it is, is that <coughs> they take this DNA, right, he's taken this DNA, and he's, you need this DNA, and he sticks it in and he fixes his DNA. He uses this DNA to make him stronger. So he takes a DNA, he fixes his genome or his DNA, and he makes a bug that is resistant to the antibiotics. Right, so for example, an antibiotic comes along, I haven't got the resistance, and it kills me. Eats me up, it does what it needs to, right? When it comes down to this new bug and I become the super bug, the antibiotics and everything come to me and he looks at me and he says, is it... Huh? Who do you think you are? Right? Oh, rugby player. Huh? You're running. And you're giving it horns. Right? 
and the rugby player comes and he tackles you. You out. That's it. When the resistance, uh, 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 antibiotic resistant drug, what happens? The runner player, the, 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 the bacteria runs and the defender comes and he, bam, off you go. And he runs off. Hey? What do you think, Linny? It like pushes him out the way. You are nothing. I'm stronger. That is a big problem. So what do we have to do? Get bigger, stronger defenders. Okay, so resistant, antibiotic resistance means it cannot be harmed. Okay, it cannot be harmed by antibiotics. Okay, can't, can't, hey, <laughs> let's get the eraser out here because we know what it's like. Um, there it is. Can't be harmed by anti, I'm not going to write the whole word, antibiotics, right, can't be harmed by antibiotics because it has become immune to it, it's taken that DNA and it's changed its DNA, okay, which is quite cool, next one, explain why the bacteria appears to be slimy, ah, did, did you see it slimy, Looney? What's slimy? They said, uh, explain to me, what do you think, why do you think the bacteria is slimy, what, what, why do you, it does look slimy, doesn't it? Bacteria looks slimy. Yo, look at it. It's, it's like a snail. Oh, that thing. Yeah, yeah this thing. <laughs> what, 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 what I did don't you know what I thought you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does, because it's like, and then look, it's leaving those slimy things behind it. Yeah, like a snail oh. trap. Yeah. Yeah. Now, why is the bacteria slimy? That, that's a good question. Okay. Now, let me explain that to you. That's, that's quite cool. Bacteria have got the slimy cover around it to protect it, okay? It's there for protection, especially for, for protection. And that's why in the picture it looks slimy. So what is a slimy cover for? It's for protection. So it does, uh, see, it does seem slimy because it needs protection, okay? It needs the protection. And that's what the slimy covering does over this bacteria. Okay, that's lack. Ah, you know what? I actually, I actually like bacteria because they're so small and, and they, they're different. Eh? They're just not very, they're simple, but they're not. Okay, now, what is the one bacteria handing over the other? What is he handing over to the other? What is the one bacterium handing over to the other? Look at this. Hey, there it is. What's he giving? Okay, that is something that you are going to learn about next year. I'm sure you are going to know about this year. It's called a double helix, right? That's cool. It's a double helix, just for later on in life, right? It is a DNA strand. So if we bring this down, what is he handing over? It's a DNA strand. What he wants to do is he wants to take his DNA. Remember, DNA gives you your mother and father's characteristics, right? Just to put it nice and easy. And he's giving them new characteristics so that he's stronger, right? This reminds me of, what does this remind you of, Lenny? Can, can, can you think? DNA. Where he's giving him a new DNA strand to become stronger and, and harder and more powerful. Come on, it's a good thing. He, do, he does this, 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 this thingy, and then he swings from building to building. Spider-Man. Why Spider-Man? Because Spider-Man goes, Tsh, and then he's... <laughs> Yo, but how did he become Spider-Man? Oh, because he thingied, but he got... Um, he thingied? Bit no. <laughs> bitten. You see, I'm looking for the word. He got bitten by a spider in that lab Very thingy. Nice. Yeah. So if you had a look at it, the bitten by the spider part is changing the DNA. The spider put a bit of his DNA in. That's why he became Spider-Man. Okay, that's exactly what's happening here. He's changing the DNA of it. Can, can you see how it's happening? And he gets a changing in the in the... the, the the DNA, which makes him stronger and faster and harder. Okay, that's exactly what's going to happen here to this bacteria. Okay, now, the next one. What are the three usually, uh, what, um, what movements, in other words, does bacteria go through? What are the three, it is three, yes. What are the three movements that they go through? These are quite cool. How does it move? Okay. It goes through three, three types of movements, okay? The first one, the first one, I'm going to give you, it's nice and easy. It's spiral. Remember, it takes a tail 
and it spirals it like, like this, like a propeller. You know, like a motor? Like if you go on a boat, they've got the propeller that, that spins like, like this, right? That's the first one, spiral, okay? Then they've got another one, which is um, crawl, okay? So they've got those little silly on the side of them, and they pull it like this, so they've got it pulls and crawls across the other one. And the last one they got, pseudopodia. Can you remember it? And what pseudopodia is, is quite cool, right? So I'm just going gonna, gonna to initial them here quickly, just so that we remember them. It's spiral, right? It's crawl. And the last one, pseudopodia. It, yes, it's a P. Okay, so it really is. So those are the three movements. Now, spiral, it's very simple. Boat's motor, it spins in a circle, and as it's spinning, it turns it away. Right. The next one is crawl. It, like it's got these little legs and things on the side, and each one pushes it forward. Like, like well, I can't go higher. Right. So if I bend down a bit and it pushes it like this, you understand, on my toes. That's the crawl. And the last one is pseudopodia. And that, I wish I could do that. Hey, Looney? Pseudopodia is quite cool. So it's got it here, and what happens is it extends the cytoplasm out, right? And as it gets there, now it starts moving its inner stuff into this arm. The arm gets fatter and fatter and fatter and fatter. My legs and everything get thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. And when I get to that side, I pop out being so solid again. Hey, how cool is that? No. Think about it. I could move under a door then. Oh, okay. Hey? Yeah, that's can can cool. you see what yes. I'm saying? Yes. You put your arms underneath there and as you get to the, the grows into you out there and this one sinks down. Can you picture what I'm saying? Yes. Right? That's how it actually moves. How cool is that? That's cool. Hey, I'd love that. I'd never be locked out of my house. Hey, <laughs> they can do what they want. <laughs> <I'm> in. <laughs> yeah. Right, so that's, that's the cool one. Next one. The cartoon has indicated that bacteria can be found in hospitals, which I can tell you it's a hospital, right? Okay, cool. So it can be found in hospitals. How can we prevent this? from happening. Come on, think about it carefully. How do we prevent bacteria from getting stronger and better in the hospitals? What do you think, Lini? What, what would we do to keep bacteria out of the hospitals? Come, think of something. Antibacteria? Oh, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what we're going to do. Sterilize. Yes. <laughs> There's that big word. Okay. You sterilize everything, right? And anything that is infected, right? When they use things, they burn it because they want to kill the bacteria that's in there. Okay? We're working with sick people in that hospital. So as they're coming in, they're sick and the bacteria is all over the place. So they've got to keep it sterilized because whatever they leave there can go to somebody else and get changed and, and mutate and stuff like, like that. Don't forget. Okay? So it can happen in hospitals. How do we stop it? We sterilize the hospital. That's why hospitals have got that smell. Yeah. Okay? It's got the sterilized smell where they try and sterilize all the time. Okay. So, what is penicillin? What is penicillin? Come, Looney, you should know this one. It's a pill. What I <laughs> <laughs> it's a pill. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, it's, it's found. An injection. It's found. Oh, is it? It can be a pill, it can yeah. be an injection. There yes. go. Pay. What is it? It's a. Uh, what is it? Anti, yes, it's an antibiotic. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. It's an antibiotic. That's all it is. Just an antibiotic. It's the one that we most commonly use, right? And if you cannot take penicillin, you wear those things on your arms or around your, your neck, right? And it says that you can't take penicillin, okay? Because it could kill you. If your body can't use it, then it mustn't be used. So it can kill you, okay? So... If you can't use penicillin and you go to the doctor, the first thing he will say is, are you allergic to anything? He wants to know, can he give you penicillin? Okay, very important. Next one. Bring it down. What does penicillin do? Okay, remember, penicillin kills the bug, right? It kills the bacteria. It breaks it. It stops it from breeding as well. Okay, so it kills... The, the, the bacteria. And what I want from you is I want to know what the process is of killing the bacteria. And somebody's got to send me the answer on Facebook or Twitter. Am I right? Mm -hmm. I want to hear that. Okay. Last one. Not all bacteria 
are pathogens. What? Okay. What other forms of bacteria can we find? Not all of them are pathogens. What other type of bacteria can we find? Those are the two questions I want you to answer. And I want you to send it to me, please, as quick as you can. Right? I want to know what other type of bacteria can you find besides pathogens. Okay. Very important. Now, next one. Next question. This is, this is a cool question. I, I kept this because this is something so cool. It is a comprehension. Now, I'm not going to read the comprehension. Okay? It is on the notes. What I want is you to, I'm going to go through it slightly. Okay? So what they're saying is the making of modern beer. Hey, eh? mm -hmm. making of modern beer. You take all the all the all the older guys sitting up now. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. How can we do this? What, what yeah. is that? <laughs> Science is cool, <laughs> right? So what they're saying in here is very similar. When beer is made, you use uh, barley, and then you've got the heat, and you add. You got to put it a certain heat, and you got to put certain roots in, and this is the real thing, right? And then what you do is you make sure the the hobby, the the barley um, germinates. Once it's germinate. You add in, um, you pass it through, sorry, a roller and crack them open, right? Then you need to put it into hot water, right? You mush it up and make sugar and amino acid grains. It's just the whole process of it, okay? So it's the nicest part of it. Then, of course, they dry hops, they put it in, they add it for flavor. It's got to be in there. Then bring it down, fermentation, they add yeast. Very important thing, they add yeast, right? And what happens with the yeast is it does, it takes sugar and, and it, it goes through this whole plot, the, the, this whole process, right? I don't want to mention the process. It goes through a whole process. And with that process, it gives off ethanol and, and um, carbon dioxide, right? And there it is. Let me just check. Uh, carbon dioxide, right? And it becomes dry, like dry. <laughs> you put it aside and it becomes cool. Now. What we do, conditioning. The beer should have an alcohol content of 4% to 8%. Ethanol, okay? That is exactly what they make. Okay, so it's got to have alcohol and ethanol, uh, ethanol as the alcohol. Right, so here we go. First question. This is awesome. I thought this was cool because I'm sure you guys would enjoy it. Name the phylum to which yeast belongs. <laughs> Not once did I mention it, did I? Hey? Not once. Did I mention it? No. And I promise you, from the bottom of my heart, it's not in that whole comprehension. Because I looked. <laughs> and that's not very nice, eh? Okay. The phylum, remember, kingdom is different to phylum. The phylum that we need is my co phylum. Oh, gee. That's yeah. terrible. Let me no. erase that yes. and get it back to a pen. Myco fighter. Okay, it's myco fighter. That's what, what it is. Next one. What is the nutrition of fungi? It is a, what does fungi do? It, it makes its own food. So it's a heterotroph. I'm just going to put it in there. It's heterotrophic, right? Then in the above process. Name the substrate that yeast uses to form food, right? Or well, uses for food. What it does, yeast is so cool, right? You stick it in, and they're putting barley at the top. Can you remember they're putting barley? And barley germinates, and when it germinates, it's a plant, it creates sugar, and it creates oxygen. We call it. Now we chuck in the yeast, right? Once it's ch chucked in, this yeast chills around and says, Ooh, there's sugar, brother. Right? And it takes that sugar for food, and it produces, it goes through anaerobic res respiration, it gives off uh, alcohol, and it gives off carbon dioxide. Right, so that's its job. That's what it uses for. Right, uh, let's go through. Why do you think that barley is allowed to germinate? Maybe I should read the questions before I tell you all the answers. Hey, what do you think? Yes. <laughs> Why do you think it needs to germinate? What significance does this have for the yeast later on in the process. I just told you. Barley is a, 
plant, right? So it goes through photosynthesis and it makes sugar. And the sugar is very important for the yeast because that's what it uses to create food, right? That's the nice one. Then you get, what are the byproducts of yeast nutrition? Just told you. If it goes through anaerobic res respiration, it's going to give off carbon dioxide. So we know it's CO2, right? And if you go through anaerobic respiration, I mean us, if we go through anaerobic respiration, we make lactic acid. When the plants go through it, it makes ethanol. Remember, ethanol. Ethanol. It's cool. It's an alcohol, right? It goes in the, it, it, that's what makes it alcoholic. It's the ethanol in it. Right. And then, in your own words, what does antimicrobial mean? It's very simple. Anti means it doesn't allow it, and micro. Anti, what they want to do is they actually want to stop bacteria, viruses, all these things from entering there. Because if it enters there, it can destroy the beer. Okay, so that's what that word means. Okay, get rid of, stop it from happening. Cool. And then the last one, name three ecological benefits of yeast not mentioned. Ha <laughs> ha, bread. Wow, bread. Do you love bread? I love bread. Bread, right? Of course, they make beer, we say wine, right? And I want one more else. One more. One, one more else. That's wow. horrible. English. <laughs> one more. You need to send it to me. I'll see you guys. Hey, what do you think? Yes. After the break. Yes, yes, I definitely yes. need a break. Yes, wow. <laughs> we need to sort out our English in studio, guys. So we'll see you straight you after this say? break. You, your English. <laughs> wow. We'll see you guys. <laughs> Today our English is <laughs> okay. No, our English is fine now. We are sorted. We have a question from Can you just not? Mbalentle Matlango. Why do doctors prescribe antibiotics when a person is suffering from flu? I want you to think about it. But first, there's more, right? That is a nice question. But I want to do this challenge question first. I've given you long enough. But have you noticed how she goes? Yes. Can I just send a shout out to the people who answered the challenge question? Yes, please. <laughs> Bradley, Tabete. Ah, wow. That kid slick endemic benediction. Sangel, Peter. Um, Tabang, Dumisho Bongi. Ah, Mauda, Hotazo, Halalelo, and Princess and Walter. Thanks, guys. Okay, well, well, did they answer it? They answered. Well, let me hear it. Oh, I'll just okay. sit there with a mouthful of teeth. Clara oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nati says the amoeba. Okay, the question: Describe the process of binary fission. Binary fission in amoeba. Yes. The amoeba uses binary fission to reproduce. Basically, that happens when one cell divides into two identical cells. It is like mitosis. Ooh. And then, can I read another one? Go for it. From Oluwake, in binary fission, an organism or parent cell divides in, into identical daughter cells with a copy of the parent's genetic material. In the parent cell, the nucleus will divide, then the cytoplasm, giving rise to two genetically identical daughter cells. I need to carry on. Okay, they're all the same. That is awesome. What? No, here's another word I'm not... Which one? Tabete says, a protozoan, a proto what? Protozoan, which moves using its... Pseudopodia yeah. unicellular that is classified as prokaryocyte can produce asexually when bacteria duplicate DNA and divide into two parts. So basically, are they saying the same thing? Oh, Wangi, DNA under the nucleus replicates itself into two. It forms a cell membrane. When the cell membrane pinches, in <coughs> pinches inward, the cell then divides itself and the cell wall becomes visible. Two Ooh. daughter or identical cells slash amoeba then form. Wow, that is awesome. That is brilliant. Well done, guys. I mean, can you? Oh, so clever. Okay, please remember that is one hundred percent correct. <coughs> when you're talking about one cell dividing equally into two smaller cells but identical to the original cell, just like mitosis. Please don't forget mitosis. You get interphase, prophase. Metaphase, anaphase, telophase. You need to know what happens in each. Huh? They won't ask you now, but you'll need it. Don't forget it. Spindle fibers, equator, 
homologous pairs, things like that. Don't forget it. It's okay, just, just, just like, <laughs> They did it in grade 10, which I know you remember. Anyway. Right. I'm very <laughs> impressed with that answer. Very, very, very impressed. It goes through basically mitosis. One cell divides, goes through interphase all the way to anaphase. After anaphase, you get your cyt cytokinesis, which is a splitting of the cytoplasm. As one of the girls said, it pinches inwards to create two new cells. That is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, so it is mitosis. Right, plain and simple. I'm impressed. Now, one more could I want. I mean, that is the last time I give you an easy challenge question. Hey, what do you think? Yeah, no. I'm going to put more oomph in it next week. So make sure that you know your stuff. Okay, next question. Number three. This here is beautiful. Hey, what do you think? It is absolutely gorgeous. This thing here is something that, well, parents see it quite often, this. Parents. Parents, like, like your mom, right? They see this quite often. This is what you find in the bottom of somebody's, of somebody's school bag, right? It's the lunch from two weeks ago, that oh. red. And what is this? It's that stuff that is growing on it. Now do you see why I say parents see it all the time? Yeah. We all see it. Right, so let's have a look at what the questions for this is. <coughs> Name the fungus represented in the diagram above. Come on. It's bread mold. Hey? It's bread mold. Right, it's just normal bread, bread mold. Very simple. I don't need the scientific name for it. But I have got it on the notes. In what the is answers. it? Right, so make sure that you go have a look at it. What's that. the scientific? Oh, you don't need to know it. Okay. It's just bread mold. I'm not going to kill you with the huge names. Okay. Right, next one. Identified part number one. This piece here. <coughs> okay, that is your sporangium, right? It carries the spores. It holds the spores, the sporangium, right? Remember, <coughs> that is the place where you're creating the gametes. Right, can you remember that? The sporangium. So if we bring it down here, it's your sporangium. Right, just your plain sporangium. Next one, write down the number which represents only cross-wall development in the plant. Cro Wait a minute, cross-wall? What is a cross wall? Okay, it means there is wall between them. Okay, the cross wall section. Now, that is very simple. Remember, this is your sporangium. The cross wall section is exactly, exactly at this part. Whoa, it's, it's not calibrated nicely. It's that piece there. It's the only piece that has got a cross walled system. Okay, now that means if we bring it back to the bottom here, <coughs> it is number two. Easy, simple, and I know you got that. If you can answer those questions, these are easy. Next one. <coughs> what is the term for having no cross walled? Ooh. What is the term for having no cross wall? Hmm. That means you've got no walls in between them. Different things and there's no walls in between them. So I would say it looks sort of like a cone, right? Right? So it's cono site. It's a conocyte. Okay. Conocytic in other words. Conocytic. Plain and simple, nice and easy. Conocytic means that it's got cones, no cross walls in it. Okay. Then, identify the part labeled four. Ooh. Part labeled four. What is the part labeled four? What do you think? What is a part labeled four? 
Looney is not even looking. Hmm? Part labeled for Looney. For spor. For number four. And then what were you circling? <laughs> I was just showing the stuff there's for. Oh. This piece. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody help her out. I'm not giving you the answer. Somebody help. <laughs> This lady out Please, to Evans, understand. I'm going to give you they know my problem, three minutes. Though. They Send know. it. Make her smart. Make me believe in her once again. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I'm leaving it. What is number four? Have a good look where it is. Okay. Have a good look. Up here. Please help. <laughs> <laughs> you got. I want the kids to help you. Trust me. Today is a very good day for me. Very good day for me. Right. Is this plant parasitic? Parasitic? Or saprophytic? Explain your answer. Does it feed off something, right? Does it feed off something where that thing is harmed and I gain? So like a flea. A flea, the dog gets harmed, but the flea gains. Yes. Is it like that? Okay, we've got some answers. Okay, what, what's the answer? Okay, up here thinks it's spores. So Quadra says it's sporangial spores. Tabata says it's columella. And Libya says it's sporangiospores. So tell us. To which one do you think it is? I don't, I, hey, come on now. Spores. That's oh, it. Thanks, spores. guys. Very Thank nice. you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. So now, get back to this. Parasite is something that sucks you dry. Right? I'm living and it sucks all the life out of me. A saprophyte, okay, that sucks you dry. Yeah? They're almost the same, aren't they? The only difference is one does it on something that is not living. Now, that doesn't mean that it's non-living. Okay? It doesn't go to a piece of metal or a rock and try and suck the juices out of it, does it? Because mm. that's what it means when you're non-living. When you are living, it means that you've had living experience. Right? So you've got a carbon hydrogen bond. Yeah. Right, right. So all I'm looking for, living and non-living. Non-living non, non is rocks, living is, is us. Yeah. Okay? But when I say something that is not living, it means that it, it, it went like this. Right. <laughs> it went like what? Like this. <laughs> Simple. Right? <laughs> it is, for example, bread. Okay? Bread is not living anymore. They've taken it. Am I right? They put it in an oven. Right? The heat has denatured everything that makes them good, right? They put yeast in to put those little big and make it rise, right? And that's what they eat. And if they eat that, is that thing dead? Is that the stuff that used to be before bread, right? The, 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 the wheat. I was just about to ask you what was yeah, living. You know the <laughs> wheat that used to go into the, into the what's that? Okay. Right? The wheat. Yes. That was alive. Am I yes. right? Yeah. Now that it's in bread, is it alive? Mm -mm. No. It's breaking it down. It's going through decomposition. So, saprophytic. What? Pl what is that? That's bread mold. So it is saprophytic. Sap saprophytic is it? Okay. Nice, simple, and easy. Let's see if I can give you one more. Explain why viruses are always harmful. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to leave it there. That question. Can you remember that question? I got there for a reason. Why is it always harmful? Here we go. Back viruses, we cannot kill. Understand that carefully. We cannot kill them. So what happens is, they come onto our cells, they inject their DNA in it, right? They pull the DNA out, uh, they, they, they stick their DNA, they change our DNA, and then they make ourselves burst. And as soon as they make ourselves burst, then uh, there's one cell down the drain. Yeah, that's not nice, right? So what we need to do, is our body. <coughs> we produce a substance that goes around it, it stops it from breeding, okay, but we still can't kill it. And we wait for our cells to try and learn how to kill this thing. Okay, that's why you go for the flu injection. Not to help you um, get everything, but to help you learn to fight the disease. Penicillin cannot help. Mm. Right. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for making my birthday special. I will see you next week. And he didn't even say it's his <laughs> birthday. My set is from these two people. We are out. Bye.